they take him to the base and just want to see what happens. And I guess he was, like, very familiar with the base. He knew what all the buildings were for, where the bulletin board was in the mess hall, and, like, other random details. And then he entered the, like, transmitter room, and he went into a trance and just started, like, spilling information about this project, the Montauk project. Do you see why I say this is not believable at all? (laughs) Yeah. Good story. Great story. <laughs> but that's would be if that's true, that would be so. I scary. know. So they brought him back to the lab and started doing deprogramming techniques to unlock his memories. And then Cameron was like, "I've been programmed to go to this lab, befriend him, and kill him, and then blow up the lab, destroying all of his research." Like oh he my was God. like a little sleeper agent situation. What the fuck? Yeah. But he didn't blow up. No, because they beat him to... They they deprogrammed wow. him. They triggered him before he could do it. Wow. So, after that, Nichols visited Montauk, like, a lot more often. And he started to, like, have little memories of what had been done there. And he started to think that he was living in a parallel timeline in which the research he had done did not exist. And he tried using regression and hypnosis to remember what had happened, but it wasn't very useful. So he started looking for other clues, like for clues that the timeline existed, that the other timeline existed in this reality. And there was a whole thing about him in his work, in his BJM work building and something about the smell of a room but it was it was too many words to be worth (laughs) even mentioning but he somehow created a delta t t stands for time so change in time antenna and put it on the roof of his house and that brought back everything he suddenly remembered it all okay interesting yep (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, are you sure he's not a fiction writer? Uh, he claims like this writer. is all true. All right. So, this is what he remembered. The experiments had began as a method of weather control led by Austrian physicist Wilhelm Reich. The project was called the Phoenix Project and it was like aimed at Again, there were a lot of words that didn't make sense, but essentially they thought that they could use waves or some kind of physics phenomenon to control the weather and, like, take the violence Mm. out of storms. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, wow. But essentially they were trying to control the weather, which we know they do already. Yeah, but I don't think that's a good idea. No, but like cloud seeding, like they're already doing that kind of stuff. So it doesn't surprise me that they would have been doing this in World War II. Yeah. Um, And then they merged the project with Project Rainbow, which have you ever heard of the Philadelphia experiment? Vaguely. Okay, so there was this ship that they wanted to try to make it invisible with electromagnetic um oh frequencies electromagnetic energy and i guess like the ship did disappear but the problem was that all the people on the ship came back either like frozen or like completely insane Like, the entire crew of the ship went insane, basically. Allegedly. This is another one of those, did it happen, did it not? Right. Um, But that ship was called the USS Eldridge. So they were trying Hmm. to figure out how the, like, what went wrong with the human factors in that experiment. Um... Is that Eldridge a creature? Isn't it the Eldridge monster? Some oh, it's spelled differently. Oh. Uh, Eldr- Eldritch, like oh. T I T C H. 
Okay. I was like, that seems weird that it would be called. I know, because I think thing, but yeah. Eldritch is from like HP Lovecraft or something. Like I think it's yeah. tied into that. Um okay. but so their focus of this project, I guess when the Philadelphia experiment happened, alleged like supposedly the entire ship transitioned into an additional timeline. So it wasn't invisible, oh. it disappeared, but it was running yeah, like, in, like it a slipped parallel into... timeline and then came yeah. back. Oh. Oh. So they call this the time bottle, hmm. which I consider it kind of like a more like a passing lane or like a pit lane. You know what I mean? Like if, if oh, time yeah. is a, a road, it's like right. a, it's a passing, a temporary passing lane. Yeah. Um, like a little detail. Yeah. So the project's main focus was to bring the humans into a time bottle along with their craft or whatever they're in. And they're essentially creating an alternate timeline that ran parallel to the current timeline and then merge it back together. Which, in my mind, it's like a time tunnel. And while they were invisible, they were in the tunnel and then when they come out of the tunnel you can see them again but mm. the issue is that in the time tunnel there is no time reference for the humans like everyone has like a time reference like you know where you are right now what time it is everything and then they go into this alternate yeah. reality and they're like they have no clue what is happening like their oh. brains don't yeah, you can't comprehend. Yeah, there's no perception but, yeah. of time now. Hmm. Oh, because you... Well, but aren't you also going with yeah. time, but just in a different universe? But they're, the reference doesn't stick. Like, it just oh. you, you just get dumped in. Right. It'd be like if you woke and up and you were underwater, universe, so. and then you... Yeah. All of a sudden, you're back to where you were. And I guess that made people go crazy. Oh. Yeah. So, that, I mean, yeah. that would be traumatic, I think. Yeah. So then they had to try to figure out how to make a time reference for the humans. Hmm. Um, they basically, they presented this to Congress and Congress said, absolutely not. We're not doing this. Because, like, they just basically discovered that electromagnetic waves could be used to change how people interact with reality and think. And Congress mm. is like, well, okay, if we did this and it gets into the wrong hands, then it could be used against us. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> wow, like the one time they think that. Yeah. The the one time they're like Maybe <laughs> that's this what is makes far this enough. that's <laughs> what makes this an unbelievable story, right? Yeah, that's true. So then, okay. instead of disbanding the project, the military mm. was like, you know, we're kind of interested in this for our own uses. Yeah. So they, I mean, if it makes them invisible, right? If that's what they, yeah, and mind control that makes sense. They really like that well, mind yeah. control, so. They moved it to Brookhaven National Labs, which was, like, a contractor. Mm. And then they, whatever, like, started putting together what they needed. And one of the things they needed was a SAGE radar that op could operate at 425 to 450 megahertz, which was the window frequency for getting into the human consciousness. And hmm. this project was done outside of the supervision of elected officials, despite their objection to continuing the project. So, it's a deep cover. You know, we're not yeah. surprised by this. They do this shit all the time. Well, right, yeah. Um, That's just so they can say they had no idea it was still going on. Right. So yeah. then, <laughs> in the book, Nichols goes on to explain that the project was funded by $10 billion in Nazi gold. I guess there was $10 billion worth of gold in this tunnel. And they went to retrieve the gold. And then it got dynamited. 
in the tunnel. Like, the tunnel got sealed with people inside, wow. and it just disappeared. And then it reappeared right. in Montauk and funded this mm. project. And then... Now it's time travel or whatever. And then, after they went through the $10 billion in Nazi gold, the Krupp family, which was, like, German arms dealers from World War II on, like, weapons, munitions, like, they yeah. were in that industry. I call them arms dealers, but mm. they're... They're in the the war machine or whatever. The, yeah. Right. Um, they funded it. Which, why would we wow. be taking funding from foreign... I mean, we probably do right. that anyway, but... <laughs> Again, Nazi gold felt like a reach to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just gotta add a little spice I to know, the story. I know, like, of course it's Nazi gold. <laughs> right. So Nazi yes. cult. Okay. This brings us to 1971 in his memories. So all of that oh, okay. occurred before 1971. I see. <clears throat> and then he like lost it then. No, at some he's. Point? Uh, that's just I'm putting a time reference in here. When it really started, once they got everything up and running, 1971 ish. But didn't he forget his memories? Well, he remembered it with the Delta point? T. Those two okay. things happened at the exact same time. He just merged the timeline so that he could oh. remember both. Okay. I see. Alright. Shouldn't he be insane then? If he's merging two timelines in his There's mind? There's a lot of more <laughs> stuff. They figure a lot out. Okay, okay. So, they were told that they could change the mood of the staff on the base by changing the frequency of the radar. And from here, it's all excerpts from the books because I could not comprehend it enough to retype it. So I'm just going to read it okay. as it was said in the book because it's just... I don't think I understand okay. it. <laughs> all right. So... I'll, okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> There were rumors that whenever the SAGE radar ran, the mood of the whole base would change. This was very interesting to the project supervisors as they were primarily concerned with the study of human factors. They wanted to see how they could train and change brain waves. This was done by changing the repetition rates of the pulse and amplitude in correspondence to different biological functions. In this way, a person's thoughts could be controlled. With the 425 to 450 megahertz of radio frequency power, they actually they actually had a window into the human mind. The next step would be to find out what was inside of it. Although the door to the shielded room was closed most of the time, it didn't work properly. The subjects were exposed to strong enough field to influence the brain waves, but not enough to do damage. However, if exposed to it for several days on end, it could be quite damaging. Duncan sustained serious brain and tissue damage as a result of continuous exposure to a hundred kilowatts of radio frequency power at a distance of about a hundred yards. The radio waves baked his brain and chest everywhere, anywhere in his body where there could, there was a change in density, zones of heat or energy could be created by the concentration of the microwave beams. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it makes sense, but I don't think radio waves are that strong, are they? Yeah, isn't microwaves and radio waves different? Yeah, also, well, they use radio waves for ultrasound, though, don't they? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> See, this is why I couldn't the... reword it. I was like, what the fuck is he even saying? What's the difference between microwave and radio wave? What does microwave two? use? Period. Heat? It's how far apart they are, right? The electromagnetic oh, yeah. spectrum so goes from super compacted to super spread out, and I want to say radio waves are on the right. pretty spread out. Low yeah, power. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So it's just, I mean, it's all on the same spectrum yeah. you just call it microwave once it gets shorter or yeah something. okay 
I don't know, how high is 425? Not that high, right? <laughs>